Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Bible Breakdown Podcast with your host, Pastor Brandon. Today, 2 Kings chapter 11, and today's title is called The Baby King. A Baby King. I want you to think about right now. Think if you can, you can think of someone who is six years old. I got someone in my mind right now who's six years old. Imagine someone who is six years old becoming the king. <laughs> That's what we're going to learn about today, but it turns out to be a really good thing. And also, very interesting lesson from today's chapter. But before we do that, as always, make sure you like, share, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Make sure you're leaving us a five-star review on the podcast. Also, make sure you are joining us at the Bible Breakdown discussion on Facebook. Because, man, the more we dig, the more we find. And they are doing a phenomenal job over there writing devotions for us every single day. One of my favorite things I do, one of the first things I do in the morning, I get up and I check the Facebook discussion group, and they do wonderful. If you have your Bibles, you want to open up with me to 2 Kings chapter 11. There's been a lot of things going on over the past several chapters. And if you remember, the overall idea of 2 Kings is actions have consequences, good and bad. And what we're seeing is, is there was this long season of just evil and evil and evil. And then tough times create tough people. And so God raised up this really tough dude named Jehu who did like clean house and got ready for the next thing that was coming. And it was this final kind of revival that we're going to see at the end of this chapter. And today we're going to see that as just more chaos is happening, God is going to raise up a very unlikely hero. And I'm curious what we'll take away from this at the end. So if you're ready, let's jump into 2 Kings chapter 11, verse 1, that says this. When Athaliah, the mother of King Ahaziah of Judah, learned that her son was dead, she began to destroy the rest of the royal family. But Ahaziah's sister, Jesheba, the daughter of King Jeroboam, took Ahaziah's infant son, Joash, and stole him away from among the rest of the king's children who were about to be killed. She put Joash and his nurse in a bedroom, and they hid him from Athaliah, so the child was not murdered. Joash remained hidden in the temple of the Lord for six years, while Athaliah ruled over the land. Can you imagine being basically under house arrest in this small little area for six years? That's a long time. Verse 4, In the seventh year of Athaliah's reign, Jehadiah, the priest, summoned the commanders, the Karite mercenaries, and the palace guards to come to the temple of the Lord. He made a solemn pact with them and made them swear an oath of loyalty there in the Lord's temple. And then he showed them the king's son. Jehadiah told them, This is what you must do. A third of you who are on duty on the Sabbath are to guard the royal palace itself. Another third of you are to stand guard at the Sir Gate. And then a third must stand guard behind the palace guard. These three groups will all guard the palace. The other two units who are off duty on the Sabbath must stand guard for the king at the Lord's temple. Form a bodyguard around the king and keep your weapons in hand. Kill anyone who tries to break through and stay with the king wherever he goes. So the commanders did everything that Jehadiah the priest ordered. The commanders took charge of the men reporting for the duty at the Sabbath, as well as those who were going off duty. They brought with them all to Jehodiah the priest, and he supplied them with spears and small shields that had once belonged to King David and were stored in the temple of the Lord. The palace guards stationed themselves around the king with their weapons ready. They formed a line from the south side of the temple around to the north side and all around the altar. Then, Jehadiah brought out Joash, the king's son, and placed the crown on his head and presented him with a copy of God's law. They anointed him and proclaimed him king, and everyone clapped their hands and shouted, Long live the king. Now pause. There's a six-year-old kid with a scroll of the law in his hand and a crown on his head. you imagine how weird and odd that is? Uh, but that's, that's what they did. And so there they are. And they're all yelling, long live the king, with this little boy right there. Watch what happens in verse 13. When Athaliah heard the noise made by the palace guards and the people, he hurried to the Lord's temple to see what was happening. When she arrived and she saw the newly crowned king standing in his palace or in his place of authority by the pillar, as was a custom at the time of coronation, the commanders and trumpeters were surrounding him. 
and the people from all over the land were rejoicing and blowing trumpets. When Athaliah saw this, she tore her clothes in despair and shouted, Treason! Treason! Then Jehadiah the priest ordered the commanders who were in charge of the troops, Take her to the soldiers in the front of the temple and kill anyone who tries to rescue her. For the priest had said she must not be killed in the temple of the Lord. So they seized her and led her out to the gate where the horses entered the palace grounds, and she was killed there. Then Jehadiah made a covenant between the Lord and the king and all the people that they would be the Lord's people. He also made a covenant between the king and the people. And all the people of the land went over to the temple of Baal and tore it down. They demolished the altars, smashed the idols into pieces, and they killed Matan, the priest of Baal, in front of the altars. Jehadiah, the priest, stationed guards at the temple of the Lord. Then the commanders, the Kerarite mercenaries, and the palace guards, and all the people of the land escorted the king from the temple of the Lord. They went through the gates of the guards and into the palace, and the king took his seat on the royal throne. So all the people of the land rejoiced, and the city was finally at peace because Athaliah had been killed at the king's palace. Joash was seven years old when he became king. Wow. (laughs) Think about that for a moment. This six-year-old boy just became king. And can you imagine this six-year-old boy, crown on his head, walking slowly from the temple? Never been outside before? He'd been hidden for six years. And now he's walking to the the, the palace and he sits down. Wow, that must have been so very hard for him. But at the same time, notice what happened with the people. The people rejoiced and there was peace because the right thing had been done. When Athaliah became queen, she killed all these innocent people that would dare threaten her. She would have killed Joash if she could have. And so she was already a bad person doing a bad thing and justice need to be done to her. And when this happened and the kingdom was actually restored to the right place, when a hard thing was done in order to do the right thing, the people rejoiced. Can I tell you, this is what I got out of this. And I don't know how you're going to do this, but there's been many times in my life when I did the wrong thing and I suffered the consequences for it. But there have also been times in my life when I did the right thing. And it was hard. And it was difficult. And nobody really appreciated it at the time. And then later, when people were getting the fruit of this hard decision, people celebrated. I didn't get any of the credit, <laughs> but they celebrated. And there was times when I was like, man, I wish somebody would notice. <laughs> I wish somebody would appreciate that I did this hard thing for the right reason. But sometimes they don't. And in your life, it's probably been the same way. Sometimes when you got up early to spend time with the Lord, even though you were tired, you didn't do it for accolades from others, but there's a time when you kind of wanted to throw that in a conversation because it was hard. It was the right thing. Or how about the time when you, know, you could have cheated on your taxes? You could have cheated on your timesheet at work. You could have done this, that, the other, but you did the right thing. And you want people to know because you sure didn't get any benefit out of it, you know, seemingly. You didn't get that extra money you wanted, and you kind of just like, ugh, you know, sometimes you just you just want to be celebrated. You want to be congratulated. And this six-year-old boy got to be congratulated for something he didn't even do, you know. But here's the thing. God knows. God sees. And God always rewards. And the truth of the matter is, is that many times you're going to do things, and you're not going to get rewarded like Joash did. Joash is a six-year-old boy. He probably had very little idea what was going on. The person who did the work was uh, Jehadiah, the the priest. He's the one that put his life on the line and called all this stuff together and do all this stuff. And the Bible doesn't say they were shouting and celebrating him. They were shouting and celebrating the six-year-old boy that barely had an idea what was going on. But guess who did know? God knew. And God rewards him. And God has rewarded him because we all now know his story. (laughs) What a wonderful reward for that. And so my encouragement to you is, is that for all the moms who are taking care of kids who never say thank you, for all the dads who work overtime so that their family can have a better life and they never say thank you, for all the people who, when that relationship went south, you could have took the low road, but you didn't. For all the the teachers 
who do your best, even though the students never seem to care. And for all the different ones who chose to forgive when it would have been easier to stay bitter, can I tell you, you're not always going to get thanked. You're not always going to get noticed. But God notices, and God sees, and God is celebrating your acts of faithfulness. And one day, when it matters most, God will see, and God will reward you. And if you're saved, you've already received the best reward you could ever hope for, and that is eternal blessing with the Lord. Let's pray together. God, thank you so much for today. Thank you that you're with us and you're for us. Thank you, God, that you rejoice over us. You see when no one else sees. I pray today, God, that you will smile on your people so that they will know that you see and that you are so very proud of them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. Well, God's word says this. It says in 2 Kings chapter 6, Elisha said to a young man, Do not be afraid. For there are more on our side than on theirs. And then Elisha prayed, O oh Lord, open his eyes that he may see. And this young man saw all around them with the armies of God. My prayer for you is that God will open your eyes today to see that he is with you and he is for you in all things. I love you. I'll see you tomorrow for Second Kings chapter 12. 